In this video, you are going to learn a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to construct a ventilated improved pit latrine from start to finish. In fact, the skills during the construction of a pit latrine that I'm about to share with you will help you save a lot of time when building pit latrines, build strong and durable pit latrines and also help you make accurate estimation of building materials required during the process. You will also know the most unique technical parts you have to be careful with and the necessary precautions you follow when constructing a pit latrine. So be sure to watch this video till the end. Let's first clearly understand what a pit latrine means. So this is a pit latrine, it is a sanitation facility that collects human waste in this hole that is in the ground. Every time this pit is almost full, this drainage truck pumps out all the human waste through this chamber here and the sewage is taken to the sewage treatment plant. Let's dive in into these 10 steps to construct a pit latrine. The first step is to set out and excavate the pit. Let's take an example of 5 stences or provisions. According to the drawing, it indicates that this wall will be 7.5 meters along the length and 1.75 meters along the width. So when excavating, we add extra half a meter which is the same as 500 millimeters all around the sides as working space. So we shall excavate 8.5 meters along the length and 2.75 meters along the width. The added distance will be allowance for the bases of these columns. According to the drawing, this pit is 3 meters deep and under normal circumstances, the depth of the pit is determined by the site conditions and should not interact with the water table. Compact the bottom and apply antamide treatment to the sides and bottom of the pit. The second step is to cast concrete for the bases of these columns and raise these columns. Cast 150 mm thick mass concrete down here in the pit that is of grade 15 of mixed ratio 1, 3 to 6, that is 1 part of cement, 3 parts of sand and 6 parts of aggregates. The columns will have wide 12 steel bars with rings of R8 at a spacing of 150 mm center to center. The third step is to raise these walls. Use well burnt clay bricks with wall thickness as 230 mm. We use header bond here. The inside will be 1.3 meters and height as 3 meters. First raise this wall up to a height of 1.5 meters, do form work or shattering here and then cast concrete for this intermediate ring beam. This beam is 200 mm thick, we use steel bars of Y12 with rings of R8 at a spacing of 150 mm center to center. Consider casting concrete of grade 25 that is of mixed ratio 1 to 1.5 to 3 that is 1 part of cement, 1.5 sand and 3 parts of aggregates. Make sure that you backfill every part that you finished this back side of the wall because if you don't backfill so early and heavy rain comes, this side will get waterlogged and the wall will fall inside. So be sure to always backfill with the maram as soon as you finish raising the wall. After casting concrete for this mid ring beam, raise this remaining part of the wall which is 1.3 meters to make this total height here as 3 meters. The next thing you have to do is to plaster this inside part with a mortar mix of 1 to 3 that is 1 part of cement and 3 parts of sand. Then finish with a cement paste which has a waterproofing additive in it. After finishing properly, paint all this inside surface with a waterproofing bituminous kind of paint because we don't want this wall to be affected by the liquid sewage penetrating into the wall. Do shattering and steel fixing for this ground beam on top of the pit lining meaning we shall have two beams. The first mid ring beam here below and this top ground beam. This way the pit latrine will be strong and durable. When you are building a small pit latrine say of three stances, two stances or provisions and its length is less than 4 meters, you can only cast 4 columns only at these 4 corners. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4 columns at 4 corners. But when you are constructing a longer pit latrine say of 5 stances and the pit latrine has more than 4 meters, be sure to cast 6 columns to be able to fully support the loading from the beams to the ground. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, five six columns the fourth step is do shattering or formwork and do steel fixing for the top slab when building two stances or three stances the beam and slab layout of the building will look like this but when building more than three stances it will look like this for example for this case here the drawing tells that we shall have 45 y12 steel bars code one 
the code is not so much important with spacing of 150 mm center to center for bottom one bottom one steel bars will face this direction with hooks facing up and bottom two steel bars will face this direction with hooks facing up similarly for top one steel bars will be on this shorter side with hooks facing down and top two hooks will be facing down along this direction be sure to also leave space for this manhole cover when casting concrete and these bricks here one two three four five for the five stances where the drop hole will be after casting concrete when doing flooring we shall just simply hit these bricks to have our drop holes open the fifth step is to cast concrete for the top slab and the ground beam we cast this beam and slab together this concrete is of grade 25 that is of mix ratio 1 to 1 and a half to 3 that is one part of cement one and a half sand and three parts of aggregates place a temporary object at the extreme corner of this urino here which can be removed easily after casting concrete when the whole work is done because this is the place which will be chiseled to take the water or any other liquid to the soak pit the soak pit will be built somewhere around here in this direction when casting concrete always be sure to use a vibrator to avoid segregation we shall cast concrete for all these five stances and this urino together here there are four in actual sense the pit starts from here to somewhere around here then the urino starts from somewhere from here up this extreme end the sixth step is to lay DPC and build this wall. The BOQ details that we shall use a hazy and based bituminous felt in laps of 300 so you have to be sure to use this one which looks like this. Also reinforce these walls with hoop iron after every three courses. Here is what I mean. This is hoop iron here below. This is the first course, second course, third course. Then lay another hoop iron here. We include hoop iron strips horizontally in mortar after every three courses. The mortar mix for brickwork will be one to four, that is one part of cement and four parts of sand. The wing area should be slightly below this main slab about 100 millimeters. The curtain wall will be one meter away. Also be sure to check water levels after every three courses. You may use a water level like this one or you may use a dampy level. Unlike other stances or sections, when casting concrete for this particular stance for the disabled which is separate from the rest, always be sure to cast concrete in this section of the disabled up to this structure slab level here because we want the wheelchair to be able to enter seamlessly and easily inside here after all work is done. Also leave a door entrance space and this wall separating men side and women side and this one for the disabled. We shall build a ramp here to allow easy access for the disabled using a wheelchair. Be sure also not to leave these kind of holes in the curtain wall because they might hinder one's privacy. The whole curtain wall must be sealed with no gaps. Also install these vents and add one more course here before casting concrete for the beam here. This curtain wall will be at 1.8 meters whereas this will be 2.1 meters from this slab level here up to this level here. The seventh step is to cast concrete for the ring beam or lintel. The difference between ring beam and lintel is that the lintel covers a small part or area whereas the ring beam covers the perimeter of the whole structure. For example, for this particular drawing, it details that we are supposed to cast a 150mm by 150mm lintel which means it will only cover this area from here up to here. Then when we are directed to use a ring beam, it will cover all around the perimeter of the wall like this. Mix ratio will be 1, 2 to 4, that is 1 part of cement, 2 parts of sand and 4 parts of aggregates. After casting concrete for this beam, add more 3 courses here around 1.5 meters or 500 millimeters in front here and then don't add any course behind here. The eighth step is to do roofing. The roof style on one side here is a shed roof, then this part or unit for the disabled will be a gable roof. We shall first fix this timber for the wall plate and according the drawing, we shall have rafter 1 along here, rafter 2, rafter 3, rafter 4, rafter 5 and rafter 6 here. This rafter 6 here will come like this and then stops here and then goes up to here and then the paling so this will be one two three 
four palings. This fourth palin will be running from here up to this extreme end here. It will act as a ridge board for the unit of the disabled. We shall also add these two short palings of the unit for the disabled. Be sure to always use timber that is treated against termites. I made a full video on how to treat timber against termites on site. Be sure to check it out later on the channel page. After fixing these palings too, fix iron sheets and lastly fix these fascia boards and leave at least 2 inches or 50 millimeters from the fascia board to the extreme edge of the sheet. We intend to build a splash apron that is 300 millimeters away from the main structure so we excavate up to 200 millimeters below the ground and compact properly with the jumper. In case you are building in loose soils and you don't compact, whatever you put on top here will have cracks and eventually break away. After compacting properly, Cast plaster to this inside part here and apply waterproofing bituminous paint and also cast concrete of grade 15 with mixed ratio 1, 3 to 6 that is 1 part of cement, 3 parts of sand and 6 parts of aggregates. The eighth step is to fix doors or metal grills, do plastering and flooring. Fix these doors properly and ensure that they are on plumb and are firm. Do plastering and rendering on the walls. The mortar mix for plastering and rendering will be 1 to 4, that is 1 part of cement and 4 parts of sand. Ensure to finish properly using a steel float to have a smooth surface finish. Install a 50mm thick wall coping on top of this curtain wall to splash off rainwater to have something looking like this. Do flooring which will be a cement sand screen of simple mortar mix 1 to 3 that is one part of cement and three parts of sand finished with a wooden floor. Also when doing flooring ensure that these squat parts are exactly here because you do not want to put them here. If you put them here you will be encouraging people to shit here so be sure to always put them here so that users will always drop whatever they will be dropping inside here thoroughly well. The edges will also be chamfered. The floor will also be sloping towards the inside here. Also fix these vent pipes for each stage. You have to cut the sheet using a nail carefully in a circular shape where the pipe will pass then push it from above as it goes down to your favorite position and then cover on top like this. These vent pipes should also be at a distance of 450mm above the roofing sheet. The pipes prevent smell in these pit latrines because there is gaseous exchange. The ninth step is to make a sock pit. Chisel this part inside the rhino here to make a way. Use a floor trap here that is fixed to a pipe bend which is connected to a 3 inch vent pipe to direct water or any other liquid to the sock pit. Cover this simple sock pit with the sheeting and backfill properly. This sock pit will help out to soak away water or any other liquid into the ground. Also fix handrails for the disabled. When a disabled person is easing him or herself, he or she will be holding these handrails which are fixed on the wall. These handrails are fixed at 700 mm from the ground this side and 400 mm from the ground this side. 100 mm from the wall depending on the size of the room. It must be convenient for the user. Also cast rough cast onto the external surface of the wall up to a height of the curtain wall that is 1.8 meters. After casting rough cast finish with a steel float like this when the rough cast is still wet to have a surface looking like this after drying when the whole work is done. The tenth step is to build a water source. Build a simple water tank stand. For example, the tank that we used here is 250 liters. So we built its base with a cross beam like this. Be sure to leave extra 50 millimeters all around exceeding the exact diameter of the tank. A reliable water source is important on every pit latrine to be able to get water to clean the pit latrine regularly and also wash hands after using the pit latrine. Always remember to put the tank on the side of the fall. For example, if the nature of the existing terrain of the land in this area falls this way, be sure to put the tank to this lower side. You may put it also on the side for the disabled to make it easy for them after using the pit latrine. You may also consider this option of building this kind of solar powered water well pump with a steel stand tank tower. You first build this steel stand and also include this solar rack here on top then later install the solar panels here. These solar panels will be pumping water from underground 
to these water tanks then from these water tanks for use in these pit latrines. This is a proven reliable way of having water for use all the time and in case you are building a pit latrine in a hilly area, be sure to alternate this ramp like this to make it easy for the disabled to access. Also weld these handrails to act as supports. The 11th step is to cast in situ terrazzo flooring. Cast a 15mm thick polished terrazzo on top of the cement sunscreen. First install these divider strips like this. The inside will look like this. The access ramp will look like this. Around the manhole will look like this plus a 150mm high terrazzo skirting. We shall use ordinary cement for this type of work, not white cement, because ordinary cement is the best for hygienically related areas such as pit latrines, bathrooms, toilets, among others. Mix cement with terrazzo flowering stones and cast terrazzo. After 7 days, do the grinding process. During the grinding process for pit latrines, you will grind using the diamond wheel first, then grind using pad 30 up to pad 50. We stop on pad 50 because we don't want to make the surface so slimy. I made a full video about how to exactly do terrazzo flowering step by step from start to finish. You will check it out on the channel page later. The twelfth step is do painting. First paint with two coats of undercoat for all wall surfaces for both internal walls and external walls. Be sure to put some material or sheeting down here so that the paint cannot fall directly on the terrazzo finished floor. Fill all dents and small spots on the walls with filler to have a flat uniform surface. The next step is to paint with at least two coats of silk vinyl emulsion paint for the inside or internal walls and weather guard paint or weather shield paint for external walls. For example, for our case here, we use silk vinyl cream color paint to paint the internal wall surface here. We used bitonite color weather guard paint for all external surfaces here. We also used peanut color here. We also painted all metallic door frames using gloss paint. We also painted this coping here using white color weather guard or weather shield emulsion paint. We painted these fascia boards white color also. Silk vinyl emulsion paint is for painting internal wall surfaces, whereas weather guard or weather shield paint is for external wall surfaces. Emulsion paint is one mixed with water, whereas gloss paint is one mixed with paraffin, kerosene, or petrol gasoline. I made a full video concerning all you need to know about wall painting. You will check it out later on the channel page. After painting, clean the floor thoroughly well with clean water and soap to remove every spot of paint from the floor. Be sure to do landscaping to ensure everywhere around the site is clean. Provide padlocks to close all these doors. Also provide this kind of wooden cover to cover on top of these squat holes or drop holes complete with handle as it is in the drawing. If the project was funded by the government or an organization, provide a markstone or display plate showing the name of the company that constructed or did the work, the funding body or agency, the year ETC. Design and paste using arrows and symbols of human artwork on the walls detailing gender segregation that is male and female in order to facilitate gender sensitive use of the designated stances. In summary, take note of all these precautions whenever constructing a ventilated improved pit latrine. The first precaution is that this particular door for the disabled unit should open from outside to give enough space for the user inside. So this is a mistake and this is correct. Precaution number two is that be sure to treat all timber against termites before using it. You may mix tunnelly chemical with water, dip timber for at least 48 hours, remove it, sun dry, then use it. If you don't treat timber against termites, this will happen. For example, like here, termites had to eat up all this fascia board here just because this timber was not treated before. I made a full video about exactly how to treat timber against termites. You will check it out later on the channel page. The floor of this wing area should be sloping towards the outside here to ease water flow and hygiene. 
this floor inside here should slope towards the drop hole so that all water and urine will flow to this drop hole easily. Precaution number four is that during the process of making this veranda or splash apron, be sure to compact properly down here to prevent this veranda from breaking like this due to settlement. Precaution number five is that do not use this kind of manhole cover because after some few months, smell will come from these small spaces that might remain here. Be sure to always use this kind of manhole cover that covers all here like this. After casting concrete, press this metallic frame then do flooring with this metallic frame in it. Then place your manhole cover like this, no smell will ever pass this manhole. Precaution number six is that make sure that this handrail is at 700 millimeters this side and 400 millimeters this side to make it easy for the disabled to hold these handrails easily while using the pit latrine. Precaution number seven is that make sure to place these small tanks just below the roof and not far away from the roof. So this is a mistake. If you press them far away like this, these pipes will break away when heavy wind comes. So this is a mistake and this is correct. Precaution number eight is that you need to cut this upper part of the frame after installation because you do not want people above 1.8 meters to knock their heads here which will cause accidents and lastly make sure that this vent pipe exceeds 450 millimeters above the roof covering. That's the end of our today's video, I hope you get something from it. If you found the information in this video helpful to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button, I would really really appreciate. Be sure to watch this video about how a septic tank works and how to construct a septic tank from start to finish. Thank you so much for watching till the end.